views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Voices of Women is a top radio show that gives voice to the personal stories of women. It will inspire women and enlighten men to follow their dreams and create positive changes in their lives. Whether the audience listens to best-selling authors or a layperson like themselves, they'll realize there are others with similar experiences and feelings to their own. This show will give women tools they can use every day, which will empower them to step out of their boxes and create the changes they desire in their life. Chris inspires women to find their voice Voices, speak up and become leaders of their own life. Everyone has their gifts to share with the world, and it's time for women to work together to bring honor and respect to the feminine voice, which is within all people, men and women. Topics include personal growth, spirituality, creativity, leadership, and divine feminine. Now here's your host, Chris Stanis. Oh, welcome to Voices of Women. Um, today I am going to be speaking with um, someone I've interviewed before, Rajmi Kilani. And um, before that, I want to just mention some things we're doing at Women of Wisdom before we get into the, the show and the juiciness of our topic. That we're we're uh, planning our 25th year, so we're doing some special things um, ongoing this year. And first up is May 22nd. If you're in the Seattle area, we're going to have a scrumptious Indian dinner. It's a fundraiser for WOW. You can um, look at it. Uh, on our website, womanofwisdom.org, and just look at the calendar, May 22nd. It's going to be cooked by our our very own Lavanya Reddy, who is from India and cooks fabulous food, Indian food. And so that's going to be a, um, a very fun time on May 22nd. And also our Pampering Day. It's a sacred Pampering Day for women on June 4th. We are in need still of people who have their healing gifts to share with our community. And go to our other website to get information and to apply that's www.thewowconference.org. And also you can p- purchase tickets to have a day of pampering, which is a great w- w- um, day to spend um, rejuvenating yourself. So, okay, on with the show. I am talking with Rajmi Kalani. She's the author of Divine Mother Speaks. I, I'm, a few years ago I had her on the show talking about that. But today we're going to talk about her, um, the film that she co-produced, I, God. So Rashmi Kalani is a global metaphysical teacher, urban shaman, international lecturer, artist, seminar leader, TV personality. She was born in India and spent the first six years of her life in Cairo, Egypt. She studied and taught with world-renowned avatars, gurus, teachers, and became a specialist in energy medicine. She's on the forefront in bringing the ancient mystery school teachings of Egypt, India, Tibet, and China, as well as the teachings of the Essenes into current time and making these wisdoms simple and accessible to people. So welcome, Rajmi. Hi, Chris. Thank you so much for having me on your show. Yes. Well, um, first, let's just get into your story how how you came to um, discover your purpose in life, you know, this road that you're on of, of being a teacher and leader. Gosh, uh, <laughs> that's quite a long story. But basically, I, uh, years ago, I was married to a very rich businessman and I had homes across the globe and I suddenly sort of realized that wasn't the be-all and end-all of life. So I got into meditation and then went on to um, leaving the kingdom of the homes and uh, starting at zero point in in London uh, with this vision of teaching meditation which happened and then going on to becoming a healer and studying the different levels of Reiki and the different systems of Reiki energy mastery and then going on to teaching uh, the Reiki masters across the globe and um, then 10 years ago I had uh, uh, breast cancer so I uh, sort of took that on on higher levels because I was sort of working with the Ascended Masters and the Archangelic Realm and it was like, you know, we're in the time of Chiron, which is the wounded healer. And as soon as I recovered from the allopathic treatments that went on for a year, which I kind of chose to take on as a holistic teacher and took, you know, Reiki into the Royal Marsden Hospital and so on, um, I was sort of guided by my higher self and, and Babaji, the Mahavatar Babaji, 
uh, to go to the States and help in the waking up of America and writing these books and, and making a, a film on unity consciousness. <laughs> so, uh, you know, so pretty long story, really. Mm-hmm. And that led it all came to, to pass. <laughs> yeah. And it led to you making, um, producing this film, which we're going to talk about today, I God. So uh, why did this film come about? I know you, you co-produced it with Don O'Neill Walsh, so, you know, and he's quite well-known in his books, um, Conversations with God. That's right. So, um, well, basically, as I said, I had this calling uh, suddenly on one of my trips to the States because I channeled the three books, The Divine Mother Speaks, Buddha Speaks, and then Shiva Speaks, Conversations with Mahavata Babaji, the latest book. And, uh, you know, on, on the trips backwards and forwards, I suddenly got this guidance from Mahavata Babaji to make a film on unity consciousness. And in London, um, you know, by the, the River Thames, I met Woody Allen, so I thought it would be with him. But then I went to America and, and Robert Friedman, my um, who's also co-producer of the film, um, offered that I, you know, uh, co-produce I God. So I wanted to go and meet Neil Donald Walsh and see what the project was about and all that came to pass. And and um, so, it, so it kind of happened that way. And then we got all the spiritual leaders, you know, many of them in America and various heads of different denominations to be in the film. So we have Deepak Chopra, James Zorn Prague, Greg Braden, Barbara Marx Hubbard, and uh, Alan Cohen, myself, Deepak Chopra, uh, Mariam Williamson, and Debbie Ford. All these guys are all in the film. So, you know, that was pretty mm -hmm. cool. Mm -hmm. So so why was this film important to make for you? Um, because I was sort of getting this calling to make a film on, on you know, the, the many streams of of belief systems and spirituality on the planet. But, you know, <clears throat> as far as I was concerned, ultimately it all comes to the same source energy, you know. So we have many languages for the same source energy. And so I was looking to come across, you know, a project that was as close to that as possible. And it wasn't really my baby. It was Neil Don Walsh's baby. So it's, you know, got a slightly more male slant to it. Um, I would have made a film probably called I Goddess, you know, because this goddess <laughs> energy is coming on the planet now and it's the energy of being, allowing, um, you know, intuitive energy. It's creative, it's co-creative, it's very unconditionally loving. And this energy is waking up now in the hearts of men and women. So I think I God was a wonderful step in the right direction and it can really help situations like ISIS and bringing peace on the planet and helping people to go much more deeply into these questions that are asked in the film, you know, about um, mm -hmm. do you believe in heaven and hell? What, what is the purpose of life, you know? Yeah, that was fascinating. Are we judged after we, we pass over and so on? Yeah. So and we'll, it we'll is get into... pretty deep. Well, how did yeah. you find it? Yeah, I just, I just watched it last night. And, uh, you know, it's right. this fascinating topic, you know, to talk about. You know, why is it such, it's such an interest uh, to people, you know, about God, that question, is there a God and who is God and what is God like? And to have all these varying, you know, viewpoints. I mean, you interviewed, you mentioned some of the famous, well-known people, uh, yeah. spiritual people who, you know, we've all heard from. But you also, they were talking to people on the street and asking them questions. Exactly. Well, exactly. In the, and yeah, so that was interesting. But, you know, I want to get back to it because you were talking about you know, being I God, because it kind of stemmed from Donald uh, Neil Walsh. And, 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 and I was actually, it was one of my thoughts is like, here you have, you know, Divine Mother Speaks. And, and there was yeah. a lot of talk in the film about him, you know, and, and that's so, it's so, uh, so much in our language of God being referred to as him. And, yeah. Yeah. and it's such a traditional religious viewpoint of that male image and how we, counteract that 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 even to me it's not god's not even a gender but we put that no, gender exactly. on him on him exactly. here i go on him you know <laughs> him her yeah. yeah it's androgen energy it's 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 beyond you know any kind of um mental constructs yeah i mean in the film you know i, I i'm as, as one of the speakers i i do speak uh, from the goddess perspective i hope and uh you know when i'm asked about do you believe in 
and this, that, and the other, you know, God and all this. I, I sort of, I think I was the only one who mentioned that it's not a matter of belief. It's a matter, matter of an experiential understanding for many of us, you know, that are deeper on the path. And and then that that comes through meditation or through, in different ways for different people through nature, and uh, it, it it's it's beyond the mind really. Yes, yeah, and it, and it, yeah, it's just fascinating because there's so many um, so many varying viewpoints of, uh, and some are it's kind of what we were brought up with, and we just sort of go on that path, whereas others sort of explore and kind of go away from that path of what the religion we're brought up with and like you say you know through meditation or whatever we explore other options and other concepts around god yeah. goddess and and many people you know reverting not reverting well in a way it's reverting back to you know the old times of when the goddess was you know in our in our mindset um in the the importance of the goddess and that and you just mentioned you mentioned in the beginning of how it's important to bring her back and bring that goddess energy back and it's kind of in you know. fact that's that's so much more current right now you know this reawakening of the goddess energy which my first book the divine mother speaks the healing of the heart really covers and even shiva speaks conversations with Mahavata babaji he is androgene and very often would be as you know the divine mother hey he wore the, the clothes of a, of a woman and when they bathed him by the river sometimes he was a man sometimes he was a woman these are all the leelas around you know shiva emanation in a body on earth so yeah it uh, but i feel that the film does sort of get you to go to a deep space of um understanding where different people are coming from even people in the new age uh, like ourselves, you know, many of us have come from a Christian background or a Jewish background or a Muslim background. And, and you know, so much of this religious stuff is brought into politics and then into war across the globe. So I think it can really help people to, to, re to understand where they're coming from and even where certain parts of those voices are so deep, the programming yeah, and the conditioning. Well, and so and to be able gonna... to choose which bits we want and yeah. which bits we don't want. Yes, well, we're going to take a break and, and come back and talk more about the film. How would you like increased health and vitality? How would you like to avoid the onset of disease as well as slow the aging process? This is all possible through a simple, safe, and natural process. Every day we are either moving toward wellness or away from wellness. Hi, I'm Mary Jane Mack. I'd like to be your partner in achieving optimal health. Contact me now at MaryJaneMack.com or call 425-392-0659. Visit MaryJaneMack.com. Chris Stanis is a spiritual leader and healer and teaches a course on how you can transform your life through a meditation and healing system that will manifest your spirit's dreams. She manifested the Women of Wisdom Conference, the Women of Wisdom book, and this radio show. And she can show you how to change your life, too. Are you ready? Visit the website and contact her at VoicesOfWomenToday.com. That's VoicesOfWomenToday.com. Do you want to achieve your goals? Do you want to strengthen relationships with others? Do you want to improve your financial status? Colette Marie Steffen is partnering with Mark Kettenbach to bring you an energetic upgrade online experience launching in April. Unfold and develop your full potential. Visit energeticupgrade.com today for more information. That's energeticupgrade.com. The doctor is in. Tune in to the hit show, The Psychic Love Doctor, with host Deborah Lee. Deborah's life affirming, highly perceptive reading method has taught Deborah how to zero in on specific problems with relationships, career pursuits, and current roadblocks to success and happiness. Join Deborah Fridays at 2 p.m. Pacific and for a special broadcast the second Thursday of every month at 11 a.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com. 
Di Siegel co-hosts one of today's most popular psychic shows, Angels and Answers, with Artie Hoffman as she communicates healing messages from the spirit world. These messages can be astounding, enlightening, and life-changing. Born with the God-given talent of inner guidance and the amazing ability to heal, Sky has healed thousands of people. Schedule a reading with Sky now. Call 908-500-1474 and visit skyofangels.com. Hey everyone, meet my friends at the Maka team. The ancient Inca root vegetable Maka is known worldwide for its huge array of health benefits. As a family-run company of true Maka specialists, the Maka team is here to bring you the best Maka the Peruvian mountains has to offer. Yellow Maka, used to promote endurance, vitality, fertility, hormone health, and much more is on sale now. I love it. Visit themakateam.com to order yours now. Themakateam.com. Welcome back to Voices of Women. I'm Chris Stanis, and we are talking with Rashmi Kilani, and she's the author of Divine Mother Speaks and also co-producer of the film I, God. So I know we, we didn't mention, like, in this film, people are asked questions, and there's there's um, seven particularly um, primary questions that are asked of the various, you know, there's quite a variety of, you know, ministers, rabbis, um, Islamic people, New Age thinkers, atheists, people on the street that they're asked these questions. But, you know, and, this, and so maybe it might be interesting just to, to, how, to talk to you about how you would answer those questions. Um, you know, like the whole thing of like, do you believe there's a God and how you describe God? I mean, to me, that was interesting to listen to people, you know, describing God. And, and we, have that, we have that image of this guy, with, you know, the white bearded guy sitting on a cloud. And it, this feels very archaic to me. And you know, I think there's people out there who still believe, see that. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting how everybody's got their different views and you've got these sort of evangelistic views. And But I think the real stars of the film were the, the people on the street, you know. Did, did you feel that as well? Yeah. They were... You know, because they were just sort of very natural and, mm-hmm. and a lot of them were caught unawares. And so they were just coming straight from their hearts or, you know, they weren't sort of premeditating what they were going to say or... You know, it was it was quite refreshing, I think, listening to various mm. people speak. But by the end of the film, did you feel that there was like a unity in in amongst all the different voices somehow, or not? I think really? I think well, yes, I think there was. There was sort of maybe that was just how it was produced of leading to that that sense of we're all saying the same thing. You know, when you get down to the yeah. basics of all the religions, it's it's saying the same thing. You know. Of, you know, love and purity and consciousness and, and all that, that, you know, what is the important, what are the important aspects of religion to, to focus on versus the differences, which we tend to get in. It's almost, you know, like a political arena to be arguing all the differences and ours, ours system is better than your system. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the cause of so much, uh, you know, uh, conflict on this planet. So, and conflict amongst individuals and all the rest of it, and even conflict within each individual themselves, because each of us are brought up a certain way, and then, you know, we choose something else, like we might have been brought up a Christian and choose Buddhism as something we want to explore, and then this sort of conflict can occur within us a lot as well, which can cause a lot of stress. I mean, I really wanted to to make a film on the spiritual aspects and also all the new aspects like, you know, Amit Goswami, the quantum physics aspect and the, uh, you know, goddess aspect, the Reiki energy and and all the new systems that have come through the new age stuff and, and just sort of covering the religious aspects just more briefly. But I was overruled by part of the uh, team that made the film because they felt you know, it was important to bring everybody's voice in there. And uh, really, you know, it's hopefully bringing through the spiritual um, and energetic aspects of uh, religion rather than just religion, which I personally feel is, uh, you know, quite a negative on the planet. It can be, you know, it's just a distortion so often or a control mechanism. 
Well, maybe your maybe that film that you want to do is part part two. <laughs> I got us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got us. Yeah, and and yeah. there would be there would be interest in that, you know, kind of like because cause it's taken it beyond the sense of of what is, um, and yeah. what has been, but what is yeah. you know you know the energy behind. I think that's what you're talking about. The energy behind spiritual um, practices and all this, and um, exactly. Exactly. I mean, and, and the experientials of that, you know. Yeah, and I think um, what people are looking for is an experience of God, and and we sort of we don't find it out there in society as it in the world as it is right now. Where people are really searching, and the problem problem is I think they're searching outside of themselves, and it's it's within us, you know, it's that going exactly. inside and the meditation that we find it. But we, you know, our world we're so external, you know, and and. And and yet they're searching. You know, I think people are definitely out there wanting to know what you know what is the purpose of life. If here we are in all these wars and all these, you know, it's, it's a very important and deep question. And even I was surprised that you know, watching it each time, you get something new and something different. It's it's quite a meaty film. There's so many aspects to it that each time you do, it's sort of multidimensional in that sense. And the 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 Buddhist uh, you know the Buddhist monk and the in the Hindu Pujari, I felt that, you know, their answers were very kind of deep, you know, because mm-hmm. the, the systems are, you know, very spiritually based, you know, it's not just some sort of church or, you know, it, it's it's a much deeper and ancient uh, uh, systems that come from mysticism. So their answers were pretty interesting and, and, and quite deep. And, and some of that energy can really take you within and, uh, you know, because otherwise... Very often everybody is so mesmerized with 3D reality. And uh, a film like this can really help people to almost go into some form of deep meditation and contemplation at, you know, during it, the film and also afterwards to, 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 to ask those deeper questions of, you know, rather than just sort of 9 to 5 and paying your bills and, you know, before you know it, you're 70 and 80 and then you've <laughs> done it. And it's yeah. all done yeah, well, and you know, it just made me think this would be a great film to have a group of friends over, and then you have a discussion afterwards. You know, like say, there's all this. It does provoke exactly. a lot of thought. And I was just thinking, what what threw me in a way was, you know, they were talking about, you know, what, um, the questions: Is there God? Or what is God like? They also got into, you know, asking, you know, what is what does God want? And 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 so many, you know, there was this, these responses too of oh, that we're here to please God or. Um, make God happy, and that was really fascinating for me because I haven't thought of religion in that way. And I know many tradition, you know, in the very traditional. I feel I guess. that um, you know uh, Neil Donald Walsh as the, as the narrator of the film when he when he wraps it up at the end. Uh, you know, not, I don't want to give the whole film away, mm-hmm. but it's sort of like hopefully everybody comes to that. Not that anybody, you know, not that we were hoping to uh, influence people in any way, but just to present a whole load of views. And and, and then, uh, you know, hopefully we come to that feeling that, you know, God is not outside of ourselves, mm-hmm. which, you know, when I answer the questions, that's very much the case. It's like we are, you know, God, goddesses in the making, and we choose this reality, and we are co-creators of this reality. And so I, God, meaning God is within me. That is the meaning of Om Namah Shivaya or, you know, a lot of the denominations. Uh, I know in Christianity, it's more like an outer God, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and many of the religions, they do interpret it that way. But really, like in Hinduism, in the deeper aspects of the spiritual aspects, uh, and in Buddhism, of course, uh, God is done away with all completely. Buddha did away with God because he, uh, Hinduism had gotten corrupt, and so he created a new system based on meditation, and and, and he didn't even talk about God. Um, but really, it is I, God, God, Goddess, dwell within me as me. How how do you feel about that? I, oh, I feel uh, that's how you feel. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, I do. I, I think is how can he not be? He, she, she, <laughs> or whoever, whatever is, you know, is a part of us. Is an energy, the energy. that you yeah. know, it is. It is a part of us. It is within us. And if we have God, Goddess, and all that within us, we have that sense of 
of of spirit um, or connected to our souls we're you know and and then this thing of pleasing god is almost that that thing is like parent child like oh you know that whole thing of we as little kids we want to please our parents or we're supposed yeah, to please our yeah. parents obey our parents and it has that kind of mentality around that when we when it's talked about that way versus so that's that's the whole of the spiritual journey you know is like if you become a spiritual aspirant these are the sort of questions you'll be asking and you know when you get into meditation or chanting or being in nature or any spiritual practice then it's like questioning all the things that you were taught in Sunday school mm-hmm. or you know uh, at at the synagogue or wherever it was and and to be able to to make some new choices you know based on 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 your on your and on what I feel, you know, which is so important is your experience rather than just what your teachers, parents, authority figures told you was the truth. And that really messes up a lot of people, you know, like things like divorce. So many people would not even consider it because they grew up as staunch Catholics or whatever it is. And so this this sort of film can really help people to go deeper and then choose differently based on their own current experience or you know, investigation into themselves and into reality in, in in choosing how they would like to conduct their lives and getting away from that horrible judgment and, you know, fighting righteous wars and conflicts in the, in the name of this is the only way and, and, and all the rest of it, you know. So it, it, it it's quite an important subject really on the planet because in the Western world, lots of people don't go to church anymore, etc., but really, religion continues in its programming in so many ways, doesn't it? In every yeah. life. Yeah, and and you mentioned judgment, and, and there is that thing, you know, the God judges in the sky and judges us. And there was even the question, that, you know, asking people, are you judged after we die? And and uh, a lot of people were saying, well, no, I think we're judged here. And and, and we judge ourselves. Right? Just that whole concept of judging is, is you know, it's kind of that's also an archaic um, God view. Um, exactly. And I think probably my answer might... to that was, you know, that after we, we pass over, we look at that life and we, we evaluate, you know, how we let we, we chose to the particular storyline or whatever. And then we choose whether we want to come back and play it different or relearn the lesson better or or change something. Just like, you know, we're the actors, directors, producers mm-hmm. um, and, and yeah, filmmakers change. of our own lives. Yeah. And so we we come back. To to as many times as we like, and so there's you know of course. Oh, and I have to and sorry, I have to interrupt, and I have to interrupt yeah. because we have to take another break. So we're gonna we're gonna take a short break and come back and talk more about the film I God with Rashmi Kanani. Get ready to experience Truth Talk Radio with host Deb Acker. Tune in to Truth Talk Radio each Wednesday at 3 p.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com to illuminate the truth in your daily life as you experience life, love, and abundance from a whole new perspective. This hit show will leave you feeling lighter and bring you into a place of infinite possibilities every day in every way. Visit TruthTalkRadioShow.com for upcoming transformative topics and guests. Tune in to The Jen Royster Show, intuitive guidance to inspire your life, each Thursday at 8 a.m. Pacific and 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This amazing show is an inspirational hour that will take you on an epic metaphysical journey to discover the spiritual approach to life's greatest challenges. Dr. Jen is an internationally known intuitive counselor, spiritual teacher, and energy healer. Call in for intuitive readings and visit JenRoyster.com for more information. Are you, are you searching? Are you searching? Are looking, for looking for a sign? A message you need to hear? From the great unknown? From the most mysterious place? That is the most familiar to your soul in the depths of who you are? The universe put someone here to talk to, someone God gave a blessing to, that you may find insight with. The Angel Lady.net. 1 800 323 1790. 1 800 323 1790. 
awaken to your radiant, authentic self. For over 15 years, Soul Purpose Advocate Nancy Monson has been focused on leading change in the lives of those looking to live their true purpose. She is devoted to supporting people in living a soul-directed life every day. Let Nancy help you overcome fear, worry, and doubt. Visit EverydaySpirituality.com to learn how Nancy can be your soul purpose advocate. Chris Stainis is a spiritual leader and healer and teaches a course on how you can transform your life through a meditation and healing system that will manifest your spirit's dreams. She manifested the Women of Wisdom Conference, the Women of Wisdom book, and this radio show. And she can show you how to change your life, too. Are you ready? Visit the website and contact her at VoicesOfWomenToday.com. That's VoicesOfWomenToday.com. Have you ever tried to make lifestyle changes but had difficulty following through? Imagine what it would be like to get up each morning with energy, clarity, and motivation to tackle the day. If you want to get past limiting barriers that are preventing you from living your best life, join holistic health and wellness coach T. Carrie Mitchell each month on The Dr. Pat Show. Or visit Lifestyle120.com today and start to receive the personal attention you deserve. Welcome back to Voices of Women. I'm Chris Stanis, and we've been talking about the film I God, which is co-produced by Rashmi Kilnani. Um, and Rashmi, why don't you, Rajmi, I keep saying Rajmi, Rajmi, um, give us where people can find um, and view the film, where they can find yeah. it, and find out more about you and also your book, your books, one of them being Divine Mother Speaks. Yeah, um, my books and film, uh, the, the links are all on rashmikilnani.com, and I'm sure you'll put a link on the show r-a-s-h-m-i-k-h-i-l-n-a-n-i dot com and also have pages on facebook for the film and the three books buddha speaks uh, shiva speaks and the divine mother speaks the healing of the human heart and also i god you uh, is on uh, neil donald walsh's website and we have a website for i god which is i god the film dot com and you can download i god on um, itunes or get it on DVD or Blu-ray um, on Amazon or Beyond Words. Okay, so people can see it for free just then on iTunes. Or, um, no, they have to YouTube. pay. You have to pay. Oh, okay. So that just, just yeah, costs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Well, that's... Um... It's uh, our, our director's award-winning Jonathan Friedman. He, um, you know, won, he, he made an ad film for $20, uh, a Doritos ad film that won over a million in the Super Bowl, and he's also won, uh, you know, awards in Cannes and so on. Mm-hmm. So it's it's a very interesting team of people, and as I say, all, you know, many, many amazing speakers and people of the street are all in it. So it's uh, there's a lot in there uh, for all sorts of people and to help widen your perspective and to understand how to, you know, come to compassion and tolerance and 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 living with others, even if we do differ in our opinions, and you know all this stuff about all Muslims are bad or all whatever, it's just not true, really. So I think we can, you know, develop a deeper understanding. Uh, and and to- the, the tolerance. Is, yeah, and and the, yes, exactly. You know, tolerance is is very very important right now, because if we start these religious wars and you know which are always connected with the politics then we're just going to blow up the planet. I mean, what's the point of that, you know? It, 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 now we're at this nuclear thing. It's, it's extremely dangerous. So this film I would highly recommend to people to watch. And if they don't like particular bits, they can always skip those, you know. <laughs> but it's, um, yeah, I think that it, it can really help bring peace within and uh, peace without and help people with their relationships. Because once we understand other people's perspectives, uh, it makes a huge difference in how we interact with each other. Mm-hmm. Well, and and like some of the other some of the questions we haven't talked about yet. Like I I know in the film they talk about you know the absolute right and wrong or or good and evil. You know that whole question of good and evil and why there is 
you know, is there evil in the world? That's All those deep. questions. That's very deep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and there are a million, you know, different ways of looking at that. But, um, uh, you know, in, in the film, when I'm asked that question, it's like um, the dark ultimately uh, defines the light in a sense as well. You know, we've come for this duality experiment on a higher levels. And if we just had white paint on a white canvas, well, you know, that we wouldn't have any understanding of uh, cause and effect and the consequences of our actions and so on. So um, really at its deepest essence, uh, if you get very, very deep into spirituality, evil per se doesn't exist. But within 3D reality, within the energies of the mind, yes, you know, because we have other dimensions that, that all overlap in our reality. We're multidimensional. And so um, uh, on 3D levels, yes, as we sow, so shall we reap. And uh, cause and effect plays out. Uh, but, you know, we, we, we get to choose. And... Um, it, it's um, in its deepest form, all is well in all of creation because creation is perfect, really. And uh, when you when you when you light a space, you know, when you have a large light, you will have a shadow. But the shadow is ultimately not real. But of course, if you know you 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 cut your finger, you're going to bleed. Or if you kill somebody, well, you're going to face the consequences of that. So how do we bring all this together? You know, that one of the, one of the things about um, like the whole question of is things being abs they're absolute right or wrong. How do we live in, in harmony if we have these opinions of what's right and wrong? Well, that, that's why it's important to understand that ultimately, you know, this film brings up all these different perspectives of the different answers by Marion Williamson and various people and myself explaining that, you know, it's it's not so black and white. That's just 3D reality, the way we've been taught in school by our teachers and, you know, but consciousness is evolving. And when you evolve in consciousness, you realize there is cause and effect. However, you know, uh, you, your idea of, of right might be my idea of wrong. And so that's the mind and polarity and duality consciousness. And so we can have, you know, a little bit of tolerance and acceptance that we may not agree with each other, but we can still make space for other people and their views because everybody doesn't have the same right and wrong and good and evil views. What's evil in one culture may not be evil in another culture. And that's why traveling and these these sort of films and the, the books I've written uh, and uh, you know high energy books help us to and radio shows that we're doing uh, to is all to bring information which is light so that people can you know people don't know what they don't know and so the more we expose ourselves to uh, broader perspectives of reality, the more we can uh, m make better choices. Yeah, that's true. Ultimately, ultimately, there is no judgment, except mm -hmm. except that we will face the consequences, and then there is also rebirth. You know, energy can neither be created nor destroyed. Again, that's a matter of belief. Um, but these are really deep subjects, so the film goes into mm -hmm. it quite strongly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, there's, there's the yeah, there's always that question too that people always say, well, why? Um, why does God allow war, murder, rape, disease, starvation? You know that whole question. Yes, yes, that, yes. that um, and and then and we call that evil. And and so why why do you think that that why these things happen? What does that really? How do, and how does it relate to God and so, humans? So and, it, as far as I'm concerned, you know, if we think something, then we're going to get one answer. Thinking is very narrow spectrum. If we come from the heart energy or into a much broader spectrum because it encompasses knowingness, it encompasses multidimensionality, it encompasses a much larger picture. It's like if you, the view from the ground floor is not the same as the view from the top of the Empire State Building. It's two different perspectives. And so um, if we are the creators, co-creators of our reality, basically this, this, this zone of Earth is it's, um, a dualistic polarity, dense polarity zone. We've come here to experience the densest form of uh, spirit and matter and it's 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 in it's in duality it's a duality experiment 
team dark, team light, the dark and the light. And ultimately that exists within each and every one of us. And the mind will always oscillate between right and wrong, good and bad. And this is what causes all the suffering. So many of the Buddhists study this, they understand about these things, you know, being the detached observer of the mind, body and the intellect. And so as you get deeper into spiritual understanding and meditation, then you become you become the detached observer and then you make a choice rather than being reactive you know so instead of choosing to kill somebody you you, you take a deep breath and you, and you and you know you then make a choice which is not to kill somebody you know to walk away or or to to say something or to say no or whatever it is um and so god allows everything because prime creator energy has given us free will in this zone and within this this the earth zone we have free will but as we sow so shall we reap there will be cause and effect within within 3d levels of this reality but now we're moving in the age of aquarius into fourth and fifth d which is beyond time and space so some of these things are covered in i god and and some of it of course goes deeper and deeper and deeper <laughs> mm-hmm. and and, and, like, and you, you did know, in the film, Further Down the Rabbit Hole, they went into it quite a bit. In my book, The Divine Mother Speak, we, we go into it. and in The Buddha Speaks, we go into it very deeply and very simply. And in Shiva Speaks, we go into it very deeply. Shiva Speaks is all about this time of change. And this time of change is, is huge transformation because um, we're waking up. It's, it's a wake-up cycle. 26,000 years we've been in a sleep cycle, and now it's time to wake up and come out of this duality game. Uh, to to heaven on earth, which is the integration of the heart with the groundedness and bringing the higher energies into our bodies onto earth in co-creation, celebration, and unconditional love. Mm -hmm. And it ties in, you mentioned at the end of the film, it kind of gets into that humanity being, you know, God and we are all one and that whole, that idea of oneness and... um, That's it. And that when it's not a separate, you know, the, we, we separate so much from us and it's not a separate um, and identity. And the mind always separates everything and makes something good and something bad and something right and something wrong and something I like and I dislike. And we're always oscillating between these polarities. And that's what causes all the suffering on earth. Mm-hmm. And, but when we come to the fulcrum point, to the center where, you know, if somebody, you know, whatever happens, you just, you become the detached witness of that. And then you you become more, uh, you know, able to make choices rather than being reactive. Yeah, and that's the end of the thoughts we're thinking. They're not our thoughts. Uh, they, they, we've, we've, it's all programming from our ancestors and uh, authority figures and culture and all yeah. the rest of it. Yeah. Well, we have to so take we, another. We have to take another unravel. break. Sorry, I have to interrupt you again. We have to take a break. So um, stay tuned. We'll come back and talk more with Rashmi Kalnani. Chris Stainis is a spiritual leader and healer and teaches a course on how you can transform your life through a meditation and healing system that will manifest your spirit's dreams. She manifested the Women of Wisdom Conference, the Women of Wisdom book, and this radio show. And she can show you how to change your life, too. Are you ready? Visit the website and contact her at VoicesOfWomenToday.com. That's VoicesOfWomenToday.com. Call the Oprah of Radio by her listeners. Award-winning host Dr. Pat Basile is blowing the doors off of traditional talk radio. Get ready for an energizing delivery and powerful interviews with leaders in the field of human potential. Dr. Pat's fresh new perspective on living life full out has catapulted her show to the top of talk radio. Tune in and Dr. Pat will help you thrive instead of merely survive. Visit the drpatshow.com. That's T H E D R Pat Show.com for listening times in your area. 
Are you ready for a game changer? Sarah Westall is bringing you Business Game Changers Radio. Sarah brings you leading experts, visionaries, and newsmakers who provide the best commentary on big issues and cutting-edge innovations. Sarah's 20 years as a business executive will help you think like an entrepreneur with expertise, energy, and attitude. Tune in to Business Game Changers Mondays at noon Pacific, 3 Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Get ready to rid yourself of all that is weighing you down and holding you back from living the life you want for yourself. Coming Clean, The Art of Transparency with Katherine Moss is a hit show for women in recovery who are ready to live life on purpose. Tune in and let Katherine help you live your truth one day at a time. Live each Tuesday, 9 a.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Discover the eight things the elements of prosperity want you to know. Lynn Brown is hosting a life-transforming, soul-expanding evening on April 30th, featuring guest speaker and radio host, Dr. Pat Basili. Lynn was guided to make this a by-donation event for entrance, and all proceeds will be donated towards uplifting the homeless community. For more information and to get tickets, visit eventbrite.com. That's eventbrite.com, and type Lynn Brown in the search. Hi, this is Leslie Fontaine, and my show is Sheer Alchemy on TransformationTalkRadio.com. When we're bogged down with our emotions, the hardships that plague us in our relationships, at work, our finances, we literally can't see the higher plane where we could be operating from. Tune in to Leslie Fontaine, Sheer Alchemy on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Welcome back to Voices of Women. So we've been talking about the film I God, co-produced by Rashmi Kalani. And fascinating subject. It's a very interesting film. I think I recommend um, people to view it and uh, and have discussion group. You know, talk to people about this important subject. And and so, uh, Rashmi, you have your newest book is on Shiva Speaks. And we were talking about it's part of the new energy that's coming about that you've been you've been alluding to during the show. And so I'd love for you to share in this last segment a little bit more on that. Sure. So um, this this book is um, about my journey with Mahavatar Babaji and how he used to appear transcendentally to me in my studio in London and how I then went on to serving him in the last so many years. And at his impulse, I channeled these books, The Divine Mother Speaks, The Healing of the Human Heart. He asked me to go to the States uh, transcendentally and work with Leonard Orr, who's the father of rebirthing and one of the first fathers of the New Age and to work on Leonard's healing journey. And then Leonard felt this Divine Mother energy come through me for many people and himself for healing. And then the book happened. And uh, and then the Buddha book happened. And then the Shiva book was the last one I've done, uh, which is available on Kindle, Nook, and uh, on, you know, waterstones.com, barmesandnoble.com, etc. And... Uh, the second part of the book, I'm asking Babaji questions in the now moment and channeling his answers for how to cope in this time, how to bridge the mundane with the spiritual life and about his teachings for this new age and what he calls Mahakranti, which is the great inner warfare type of thing, you know, where we are all going to uh, reduce the lower octave and, 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 and create an alchemy of the higher octave. Uh, for Christ consciousness, which is unity consciousness of the unified field for all. He's the Christ yogi who taught Jesus, Moses, and Elijah, and he is here to see 7 billion uh, ascend into this higher frequency. Um, and he teaches truth, simplicity, and love. So in this time of colossal change, he, you know, it's really powerful to work with these energies because my book, have are like transmissions. I don't write them. I speak them out, uh, and they carry the energy behind the words of the Shiva energy, the Buddha energy, and the Divine Mother energy, which are archetypal energies that exist within all of us. And if we invoke these energies, it's extremely powerful um, to help us with our lives and our peace and groundedness 
and getting through the changes that are coming, you know, all the economic uh, challenges that are coming for all of us, uh, uh, the geopolitical challenges, the climatic challenges, and so on. And uh, he also teaches a lot about love and truth, which is, you know, uh, once you see a film like I, God, for example, you know, you get a different perspective of the truth than you had before you knew what you didn't know, and so on. So just shining more and more light. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it's a really powerful book uh, that can help people a lot. Uh, and it's very simple. It's It's got nothing really to do with religion. None of the three books are really to do with religion. They're to do with um, the metaphysical understanding, the mystical understanding, the energetic understanding of uh, everything is energy and how to work with energy within us. And then as we shift the within, then the outside shifts as well automatically. And so when you're working with people, what do you tell them? What's the first step for them to do to, you know, to work with this new energy, to feel safe and comfortable and, and, uh, and trusting it too? Well, the first thing is to go within and breathe. <laughs> and uh, Babaji has given uh, Rebirthing to the Planet uh, uh, via Lenador, which is the modern Kriya Yoga which is rebirthing, which is conscious connected breathing. And I'm a rebirther and a teacher of rebirthing as well. And then working with chanting, uh, being in nature, uh, slowing down, slowing down. Uh, the first book, The Divine Mother Speaks, has all the uh, tools for uh, healing for uh, you know beginners and advanced students of energy medicine and teachers of energy medicine made very simple so these are the wisdom teachings of all time made very simple for people and they just refire your encodings your dna is moving from 2 to 12 helix and that's just re, re, re you're just re-remembering what you already know um, and then you're able to bring those energies of you know the heart energy the grounded energy the energy of um, simplicity, the energy of love, um, and so on. And, and uh, yeah, you know, it, it, it's all quite simple, really. And yeah, when you, when you boil courage, it courage, courage. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you just mentioned, like, so, the DNA, that evolution to 12 strands of DNA. And, yeah, yeah. and, and how do you see that to come about? Well, it's happening. Uh, and the scientists have found some DNA, and they call it junk DNA, but it isn't. Because, you see, that goes back to how we were tampered with by, you know, the dark energies that came to this planet ages ago, and then we allowed that interference. And uh, there are other books you can read about that besides mine, you know, such as Nothing in This Book is True, But That's How Things Are Anyways by Bob Frisell, or the Barbara Hanclaw books, or the Barbara Mosiniak books about... Uh, the Pleiadian wisdom and the Syrian wisdom, and uh, uh, or Dranvalo Melchizedek, the Flower of Life, and you know the the, the the history of the planet and the geography, etc., is not what mainstream presents. Everything is upside down, and so once we get into working with you know Saint Germain and and Dark and Melchizedek and the you know Divine Mother energies and the the goddess energies in her various forms, the Shiva energy, all these different energies, then everything starts shifting. So, you know, some people will connect to, 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 to Babaji, others will connect to Buddha, others may connect to the Divine Mother, some connect to, to the Ascended Master Jesus, you know, and that's not the Jesus that's presented in the Bible, essentially. It's, it's, a, it's a high Melchizedekian energy, and Melchizedek is a, is a priesthood, um, that exists in the universe, and uh, Jesus was part of that uh, priesthood, and many of us have been reconnected to those energies in this lifetime, in initiations, in sacred sites, and through um, uh, studying energy mastery. But energy is what all of us have, and many people are waking up simultaneously to a lot of things now, and a lot of the youngsters are being born with it automatically. They just have an innate knowingness. I mean, don't 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 you feel some of this is resonating with you? I mean, is it part of your experience? Um, yeah, I mean, definitely. I mean, I'm I'm working in the divine feminine arena of uh, with woman yeah. of wisdom and everything, and the the bringing the feminine in and the importance of that of of um, empowering women and their voices, and that that's all that's all part of that of recognizing. Um, so you enjoyed the Divine Mother book? 
Yes, yes. It's, yeah. it's been a while because I think it was almost three years ago that I interviewed you. So it's been a little while. I'll have to pull it out and take a look at it again. And I'm going to take a look at your newest one, the Shiva Speaks. I'll take a look at that. I advise have other people, you know, because um, whether you believe these things or not, there's always gems of information of, of where you can go. Well, we have to end the show now. I'm so glad that, to have you with us today, Rajmi. Thank you for Thank you so much. Lovely reconnecting with you. Big, yeah. big uh, kiss and lots of love and namaste. And maybe we'll do another show on Shiva Speaks. Many, yeah, many blessings to everybody yeah. everywhere. Thank you. So, Thank you. Um, yeah. And so, again, I want to um, just mention our events that are going on. Our two main ones are we have a fundraising dinner on May 22nd and June 4th, our Pampering Day. So check those out on our website, womanofwisdom.org. And also my book, which is a award-winning book, an Amazon bestseller from June 2009 when I did an Amazon um, launch. Um, it's Woman of Wisdom, Empowering the Dreams and Spirit of Women. And it's a, it's a great book to um, buy as gifts for friends. If someone you know is needing some inspiration in their life or wanting to explore the divine feminine like we've been talking about. There's many, many voices from women who've been participants, who've been presenters, artists, um, poets, all sorts of things in the book of around the Divine Feminine, many voices on the Divine Feminine. And you can uh, look that up on our website at womanofwisdom.org's uh, website, um, and you can purchase there to benefit Women of Wisdom. So great. Well, thanks for being um, with us today on the show, and have a great weekend, and we'll be back next week. You've been listening to Voices of Women with Chris Stanis. Tune in each Friday at 1 p.m. Pacific Time, 4 p.m. Eastern Time for Voices of Women Today. Radio with Chris Stanis.